morning, everyone. Sorry, I'm a bit too tall, I think. Good evening, Sabawang. Thank you for your support. Today afternoon, I was speaking in the hot sun. Today evening, it's raining. But I am here and I am enjoying the experience for one reason. Because all of you are here, all of you are here, suffering with me, shouting with me, enjoying the moment with me. Thank you so much for your support. Now, I am old-fashioned in many ways. Um, my, and I like telling grandfather stories, so let me start with one. Now, in 1936, when my grandfather first came to Singapore, he started out working in the Sembawang Naval Base. Like many other Indians of that time, Sembawang was the first place they came to. And what surprised me, I mean, you know, during World War II, he was, uh, he was a volunteer of the British forces, got captured by the Japanese, fled to Malaysia. But what surprised me when I came back to Sembawang just about three or four years ago was that there was still a very big Indian, Tamil, Malayali community here. And many of them remembered my grandfather. And that surprised me because what that told me is that there's a very deep-rooted community here. Now, I think some of the other communities, you have probably been here for many decades too. And you have probably seen how this estate has grown. So I will probably stop my grandfather's story there because I think all of you know where I'm going to. So for all of you who have been in Sambawang all these years and who've supported us very strongly, thank you very much. Okay, I, I was told to remove the mic. Sorry, I will still try to get used to this. Now, quite apart from grandfather stories, I think the next question we have to ask is what happens next? Because the decision you are making is not about the past, it's about the future. But in deciding about the future, I think it's important to also look at things like the track record. Now, I think one of the things that we was that we had we managed to create an environment where companies want to come in, companies want to do business, there is safety, there is security. But the big picture isn't enough. In fact, I know some parties think block visits are unfashionable. I have found block visits very educational. So maybe what I'll do is I will share some of the lessons I have learned from block visits. Because I think it is from those lessons that I can explain to you what I can probably do on a micro level, on a much smaller level. Because as an MP, if I sit on the back bench, I may not have that much influence on national policy. I can certainly make my opinion known, I can certainly voice out what I think, but I may not be able to influence it. And if anyone tells you that by holding one MP position they can change national policy, they are probably not being completely open. But what can we do? I have learned from two very good MPs, Mr. Shanmugam at Chongpang and Dr. Maliki. And I have realized that if you focus on the small things, there is a lot you can do as well. Now, at Admiralty, for example, there are many programs that Dr. Maliki has run that I hope to continue. One of them and this is part of our manifesto too, to make sure that all Singaporeans can benefit from our growth. Because not everyone is doing well. People have problems. At MPS, we see them all the time. When we go for block visits, we see some people who have problems too, who may not want to come to the MPS. But by meeting people, by letting them voice their feedback, you can find out what they need. Sometimes it's big things. Sometimes they need financial help to make the next mortgage payment. Other times it's little things. People want a covered walkway. People want a bus service to be routed where they are. But these are the sort of things you can only find out if you go house to house, knock on people's doors, and ask them what can make their life better. But finding out is one thing. What you can do about it isn't that easy either. 
Because one of the things I found out is that being an MP involves working with a lot of different people. You have to get people together. You have to help people to get along. So you can't always be fighting. In fact, in some cases, you might find two sets of neighbors. Each one comes to your MPS to complain about the other. They are both your residents. What can you do? You can't take sides. So you have to try and make peace with them as far as possible. You have to try and ease it. And, to, and if you have good you know, grassroots leaders helping you, they can probably be the first line to go there. The MP can come in to do the introduction, and they can follow through. And these are systems that we have in place. Bigger things, like, for example, trying to get a bus service, that, I understand, requires negotiations with SMRT, SBS, LTA. It's not the sort of thing you can do overnight with a click of fingers. Setting up polyclinics, I know some people have promised this, but I'm guessing that would have to go to the Ministry of Health. It's not the sort of thing an MP can do on his own. So the reality is, if people make wild promises, anyone can make promises. You know, we can promise to give you A, B, C, D, E, and F. But when it comes to actually doing it, it's not that easy. And the best we can do is promise to do our best to get it done. Because we understand the different people involved at the table. We understand it's a process of give and take. And we understand your aspirations. The other important lesson I learned from block visits is that people have different needs. For example, when I went to families that have children who are in their you know, 20s to 30s, people about my age, one of their concerns is, oh, you know, flat prices are so high, we have difficulty affording it. Shortly after that, I went for a visit to an EC. This had young families with children who were five to seven. And their, one of their questions was, what are you going to do to make my property value go up? Can you bring in good schools here so that you know, our property value can appreciate. So you realize that different people have different needs. And you have to try and find a way, you have to try and find the best balance of policies to meet the different aspirations. Anyone who promises the people on one side, yes, I'll give you cheap flats, and promises people on the other side, yes, I'll make your property value go up, is probably not giving you an honest picture. And what we want to do is to understand your needs and to try and meet them in the way that we think would be best. But in the process, if we have difficulties doing it, we will get back in touch with you, keep you in the loop. In fact, I remember one of the interesting stories that Dr. Maliki told me was that I understand you know, flats get repainted every few years. So one of the flats was repainted to a color that many of the residents were not happy with. And there was an uproar. So immediately, we organized a meeting of all the residents in that block, got them together, decided what color they wanted the block painted, and had it repainted. Now, these are small issues, but these are important to each of the residents who are living there. And these are the things that we have the experience dealing with. I mean, a lot of these things are things that I have learned by working with MPs and understanding what can be done, understanding what can't be done. So what I hope to do and what I hope to achieve here is to actually continue a lot of the good work that has been done by the MPs here. I have been happy to have had the support of the wonderful grassroots leaders from Admiralty and the wonderful branch supporters. I mean, all of you have made this journey a lot more bearable for me. At times when I was stressed, I was not sure what to do, you have been there to help. And I think the main reason I feel that this job is doable is because I have all of your support. So thank you very much. So come May 7th, what will you do? Now, I think Think Koon has got all of you fired up, so I think all of you know what to do. But Yes, vote PAP. We cannot promise you the moon, we cannot promise you the stars, we cannot promise you to change the world, but this is what we can promise you. We can promise you to do our best to get the big picture right. 
to understand what goes wrong, to change it as it, you know, as the need arises, and to do our best to reach out to each of you to the best of our ability. Because I understand that Dr. Mali is visiting blocks very regularly. But even then, there are people who say, I never see my IP. And of course, that's because most of you are busy working. When we do a block of business, we're lucky if we get 40% of the people there. Uh, there are about 135 blocks at Admiralty. So even if you try to visit one block a week, you probably cover all the blocks twice in five years. So if it happens that you are not there those two times, you know, the end came around the five years of your block, we may miss you. But the important thing to remember is that the door is always open. You can always find us at any SSS. So while we do our best to reach out to you, if we don't know you for some reason, Please feel free to come to us because, because we can only get better with your feedback. I want to understand your needs at the local level. So I hope to work with you. I look forward to working with you, and I look forward to your support for that. Thank you very much.